So in this video I'm going to clean bicycle parts with this bucket and I will also review this particular ultrasonic cleaner. I will explain how it works and give some tips and pointers on how to use it. Let's start with something easy and that's my glasses. I don't use them very often. I've had these for five years or so but I've never really done a thorough clean of them. So this can get gross. So I will heat this to 40 degrees but I will not use any detergent because I've heard that could damage the coating on the glasses. I ran the machine for only 10 minutes in about 45 degrees Celsius, since I want to be careful to not damage anything. These glasses have got some verdigris where the paint is worn, but that was not removed by the cleaner. The paint on the frame turned somewhat matte, and I decided to not do a second run, since I think the paint would be damaged even more. It's not all a disaster though. The glass itself turned out to be very clean and looked new again. I just think that you need to be careful with coated or painted details. So now it's time for my old dirt jumper. It hasn't been cleaned for like 10 years or so and it's in desperate need of some attention. So the chain is full of grease and I think it's time to explain the three different components needed to do a proper clean with an ultrasonic cleaner. Ultrasonic cleaners are used in a lot of different industries. They can be used to clean jewelry, glasses, medical equipment, etc. without causing too much damage, I think. Detergent is needed simply because the ultrasonic waves are not very effective at removing grease from an object. And that leads us into what ultrasonic waves really do. Most machines use 40,000 Hz to produce waves in the water. Behind each wave, there's a low pressure area, which causes the water molecules to cavitate. That's macroscopic bubbles that are formed in specific conditions, and HEAP helps with that. 50 to 60 degrees seems to be a good sweet spot. From anything above 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, the efficiency of the cleaner worsens. The bubbles implode, which is the opposite of what bubbles in boiling water do. When the bubbles implode, a shockwave is transferred through the water, and that's what causes any loose material to disintegrate. This phenomenon can be observed on boat propellers, for instance, where cavitation can occur at the trailing edge of a propeller, and that can cause abrasion and damage to it. Heat is not only good for creating an optimal environment for cavitation, it also dissolves grease to an extent. Time to clean a bike chain. The best thing would be to use a bike cleaner first to get rid of all the gunk. Ultrasonic cleaners are not miracle machines, and it's good practice to create the best possible conditions for them to do the job. But this test is in the interest of science. This cleaner has a volume of 10 liters, which is good and bad. It's good because I can fit everything I need in the basket, like mountain bike pizza cassettes for instance. It's bad because you will need a lot of degreaser. That's why I use this bag with zippers. These IKEA bags have two zippers, which is necessary to seal them properly. You could use a glass jar as well, Plastic jars seem to not work as well since they absorb too much energy. There are tons of different detergents you can use and everyone has their favorite and specific use case. I'll list some of the most popular here, but since I've had luck with regular dish soap using my chain cleaner, that's what I'm going to use here. So a gunky chain and a mild environmentally friendly detergent, is that really going to work? I set the temperature to 60 degrees and let the machine run for 30 minutes. The chain is indeed much cleaner, but there's still dirt in many places. I sort of knew this, but I just wanted to see what would happen here. I decide to do a second run for another 30 minutes, but this time I will remove most of the dirt first. Now the chain looks much cleaner, but there's still dirt in very few spots, and it's time to review the machine itself. I got this ultrasonic cleaner from Vibor, which is a global company, and this cleaner has been sold in the thousands, if not in the millions, over many years. That's a good thing, since it looks like a mature product, and the finish is surprisingly good. I think it's amazing what you get for your money. These bigger cleaners also get a drain on the side, which is quite useful. But it wouldn't be a deal breaker if it wasn't there. Don't get fooled by the labeled size though. 10 liters is only the total water volume. The basket can only take around 3 liters of stuff. So check the size of the basket itself when shopping around. Heating water takes time, so it's wise to add already warm water to save time. There's also a timer here 
and when the cleaning is finished, both the transducers and the heating element shut off, which is good from a safety standpoint. The cleaner is well insulated, so the water stays warm for several hours. As far as I can tell, this machine is very well built, but there are some functions missing that you will find in more expensive cleaners. A sweep function would be nice, but I know I'll have to pay at least double the money for that. Ultrasonic cleaners have the same problems as with microwave ovens. The waves form heat spots in some areas, and that's why there's a rotating disc in the ovens. I'm speculating that the sweep function changes the frequency over time to move the standing waves to different positions. Let's try to clean other stuff. What happens to aluminium? Does the rubber handle get affected? Will the powder coating get damaged? This thing is old and rusty. And this is a very rusty bolt. What about an anodized Allen key? Will brass get affected? And finally, we have this carburetor from a 1955 Jaguar XK140. It could be from an old Volvo. We debate over this, but let's say it's from the Jaguar, since I think that's much cooler. It's got some carbon deposits here, and it will be very interesting to see if that can be removed. I ran the machine for 30 minutes with some dish soap solution in 60 degrees. The powder coated part was only a bit dirty now, otherwise unaffected. And so was the aluminium part too. And the rubber handle, and the allen key. Not much had happened with the rusty bolt, but this wedge looked cleaner. I decided to run the machine for another 30 minutes. I actually only did the wrench, the bolt and the wedge this time. Nothing happened to the wrench. The wedge looks sort of clean, but not exactly stripped of all colors. That bolt was still rusty, but that was in a bad shape from the beginning. I then decided to put the machine on the floor, thinking that the cardboard box might take some of the energy away. This is the last run. The bolt is still rusty, the wedge looks gritty, but it actually feels very smooth to the touch, so that's a clear improvement even if it doesn't look like it. Time for that carburetor, which I stripped to smaller pieces. Still the same dishwasher solution, 60 degrees and 30 minutes. I must say that I'm actually quite pleased with the result here. I think these complicated details are best suited to this type of cleaning. It's difficult to reach all spots with any other method. Surprisingly, the carbon deposits on the details facing the engine intake was easy to rub off, even after only using this mild detergent. My absolutely final test was this other wrench with some rust on it, which didn't go away unfortunately. I think I've come to some sort of a conclusion here. An ultrasonic cleaner isn't a magic machine, it needs to have the right conditions to work. And I don't think you can have one type of detergent for all types of dirt. I guess rust needs to be treated with a different detergent, carbon deposits with another, and grease with something else. But when emptying the cleaner, I'm after all amazed over all of the dirt that has come off. Where did it all come from? I didn't have time to experiment more since I promised Viewer to have this video out before year end. But I think with different detergents I would get much better results than I got with just using dish soap. So, is it necessary to have an ultrasonic cleaner for just cleaning bike parts? I don't know, but I think it works better if you've got a lot of motorbike parts or car parts that you want to clean. So for me personally, I will probably use this when I want to clean my bike chain. And that's good enough here in Sweden. But I do have a bike in Spain too. On that bike, I don't use any oil to lube the chain. I use wax. And there I see a point with an ultrasonic cleaner. But if you happen to own a motorcycle or two, then I think an ultrasonic cleaner makes a lot more sense.